Oh, hello, YouTube. Today on the Naughty Library, we are going over episode three of the Mayfair Witches, and this episode was fine. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm, I've yet to be super impressed with this, like, the series so far. Everything just kind of feels a little underwhelming. There were some things that were good in the episode and some things that I'm just, I'm waiting for things to happen, essentially. Anyway, let's just get into what actually happened in episode three and we can discuss from there. So once again, the episode opens up with Suzanne back in 1600 Scotland. Suzanne's mother, I'm, I think, I think it's her mother. I'm not 100% sure it's her mother, but I th it's a mother figure. <laughs> she gets brought home after being gored by a wild boar and she's dying and no amount of all of the herbs and tinctures that Suzanne has is going to make a difference in this. So she's actually kind of learning her final lesson as a healer, which is how to help someone pass peacefully. And that kind of allows for a little bit of continuity with Rowan's story because literally both of them are standing over their mother's bloody body. So on that note, we're cutting back to Rowan in the elevator with Deirdre's body. So the elevator hits ground floor, opens up, and it's like full on The Shining, just blood coming out of an elevator everywhere. It's just a lot, <laughs> okay? And Rowan, she's covered in blood. Deirdre's throat is like way slit worse than I thought from the last episode. Like, oh my gosh, did she nearly get decapitated? Either way though, this is a really nice hotel and seeing all of that when the doors open is just a whole lot to take in at four o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a bit much, so pandemonium. Everyone's freaking out. All of the hotel guests are screaming. Uh, Rowan's in shock. Carlotta's there. She's horrified because there's Deirdre all bloody and dead. So as awful as Carlotta was to Deirdre, she did love her in some kind of way but at the end of the day she hated Lasher more than she loved Deirdre so that's like Carlotta's main problem here it doesn't change the fact that she did love Deirdre in her own way but after you know all of the pandemonium and things settle down Carlotta she introduces herself to Rowan saying hey I'm your great aunt um you should come back to the house with us I gotta like tell you things but Rowan she's just not having any of this right now like She's had a doozy of a day. <laughs> like, her whole trip to New Orleans started by getting ghost banged on a plane, and now her birth mother is dead. So, like, she's had, she's had enough. She, she's gonna peace out. She looks out the window, she sees Cyprian just get to the hotel, he parks. She's like, all right, you know what, lady, I'm not dealing with you, bye. She pieces out, she goes off with Cyprian. Because of all the people in her life right now, she, he's the only one she trusts even, like, a little bit. So Rowan and Cyprian go back to Cyprian's, like, fancy apartment, and he starts explaining what the Talamasca is, and, and what it does, and how, yes, yeah, some people have powers, and yes, there's a ghost demon thing that's been haunting your family since forever. So, ta-da! And, you know, Rowan's a scientist. She's a, she's a doctor. So she's having a hard time wrapping her mind around all of the paranormal events that are now happening in her life. And she's just sitting there covered in blood going, the fuck is happening right now? You know, she's had a day. And, and then the bombshells just keep coming. She also finds out Ellie always knew she, she really did have powers and was keeping it from her, gaslighting her into believing that she was crazy. And there's more Mayfairs out there with powers just like hers. It's a lot. It's a lot. So <laughs> Rowan, in general, is a very closed off person. And we've seen this uh, in many episodes that when someone starts getting too close to her, she tends to lash out. We've seen it multiple examples. We're not even going to get into all of them. That's just kind of what her personality is. So now that Cyprian is getting closer to her and like giving her all this information, she of course is gonna start lashing out. And she basically just tells Cyprian, fuck off glove boy. Like she just really pushes him away. And Cyprian's like, okay, fine, fine. You need some space. So listen, I have to go investigate, you know, the murder <laughs> that just happened. Will you at least stay in my apartment while I am gone because it's safe here? And Rowan's like, okay, fine. So Rowan relents to this. She, this is the only place she knows really in the city anyway. So he leaves, he gets the Talamasca to come over and he, and the, like the wizard brigade shows up and like sprinkles all this extra magical powders on the building. <laughs> that somehow makes it ghost proof. So he's really doing his whole like knight in shining armor routine here protecting the damsel in distress. 
So on that note, we cut back to the hotel and Cortland shows up finally after, you know, Deirdre's been murdered and he's kind of, you know, losing his shit a bit. And Lasher shows up and Lasher is having a full on temper tantrum because Deirdre just got murdered. Like, has Lasher been manipulating Deirdre since childhood? Yes, but he's also been her companion for about 40 years at this point. He does love her in his own way and he's heartbroken a little bit even though he's the bad guy in this situation. He still has love for Deirdre and now she's dead so he is unhappy and but Cortland is just a little snake and he's just trying to spin it like hey this is heartbreaking I get it like I love Deirdre too but like hey guess what Rowan's here she's the 13th witch you know the prophesied 13th witch and like your time to hear your time to shine and Cortland is just really lucky Lasher is not corporeal at this moment because like yikes he's about to get punched in the face <laughs> now the whole reason I'm bringing up the scene at all is because I want to talk about this book related factoid that I think is going to come up more and more as the season progresses because in the book right Lasher has been manipulating the Mayfair witches specifically to achieve his own goal. I will not say what the goal is because spoilers, but he knows that the 13th witch in line for the Mayfairs, when he gets to this point, this witch, through selective breeding basically, <laughs> will have the right combination of abilities and genetics to be powerful enough to give him what he wants. So he has been cooking up Rowan for like 400 years at this point. And the book keeps referring to the 13th witch as the key, you know, the key to getting what he wants. And the show has made it a bit more literal because a pendant is a literal key. <laughs> In the book, a pendant is just a pendant. And like now they made it a key, so they're being a little on the nose with it, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's like, a big deal in the book, <laughs> which I feel like they're gonna do in the show. Let's just have it be there for clarity's sake. Speaking of the other Mayfairs, back at the old Mayfair house, Carlotta is quite distraught about Deirdre, but also already starting to plot with Millie, who's her sister. And ultimately they have certain goals. So, you know, one, ideally, Lasher gone forever. But backup plan, two, um, find someone new to bind him to. And also another plan, they want to keep Rowan away from Cortland. They should, just going off of what I know from Cortland in the book, keep, keep her away from Cortland. So <laughs> I, I don't blame them for that. So ideally what they need to do is get Rowan to come to them. So they're plotting ways to do that. And Carlotta also speaks with Delphine, um, Deirdre's nurse. And, you know, Delphine's also grieving. But Carlotta, that little bitch, She's like, Delphine, guess what? You know, Deirdre really loved you. And in fact, she left this to you and he, she hands her the pendant. So she's trying to bind a lasher to Delphine, this bitch. So Delphine reluctantly puts on the pendant. And Carlotta's like, hey, could you go down to the basement? It's like, I need you to get something. I'm old, I'm weak, go get things from the basement. So she goes down and she's like, all right, what do you need me to get? And that's when the poison starts kicking in because not only did Carlotta bind her to Lasher through this pendant, which by the way is a bigger deal in the show than in the book. I think I've mentioned this before, but like the pendant eh, is not, it's not too binding in the book. So she's bound to the demon ghost Lasher and also poisoned because Carlotta poisoned her too and then just traps her in the basement. She locks her in there to die. Damn Carlotta. You a bitch. However, book fact, this all really checks with Carlotta's character because in the book she did poison a Talamasca agent and then lock them in the attic to let them die. So it fits with her character. But okay, enough with the Mayfairs. Let's go back to Rowan. What's going on there? So she's back at Cyprian's apartment. She's just kind of finally getting on with her evening, trying to unwind from all of the craziness. She finally washed the blood off. So, you know, she's getting there. And uh, wouldn't you know, damn it, the fire alarm starts going off. So like, damn, can a girl get a break? <laughs> so she has to go outside of the building and like wait for the fire department to do whatever the fire department needs to do. And this is, whole thing is just a classic Lasher maneuver because Lasher isn't really corporeal enough 
to physically harm people. However, he is clever enough to cause accidents to happen that will harm people. This is fully in his wheelhouse, and he didn't ask us to row in, and since the Talamasca came over and sprinkled, like, ghost repellent on the building, he had to get creative, so he started a fire. So since Rowan doesn't really know what else to do, she decides, you know what, I'm just gonna walk over to the Mayfair house, I guess. I, I vaguely know where it is. I'll just start walking and figure it out. <laughs> like, so she's just, she's just wandering the streets in pajamas. And while she's out wandering around, she comes across a jazz funeral. And side note to everything about this series for a hot second, because this little restaurant she runs into, the Filet of Soul, and like the corner it's on, was also used for a jazz funeral in the James Bond movie Live and Let Die. I am a nerd. I know. I am a James Bond obsessed nerd person and I saw it and I freaked out because that's exactly the corner that it happened on in the movie. <laughs> so I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but it's from Live and Let Die and I got very excited. So while Rowan is just kind of watching the funeral go by, this lady walks up to her and this uh, lady is also mourning someone. So she offers Rowan this like random drink from a street vendor who's very bright, like this very bright woman street vendor. And she's like, here, it'll help you with your grief, la la la. Here's Rowan just accepting drinks from strangers on the street. She's, she's a brain doctor, everybody. <laughs> like I can't with her at times. However, side note to all this, remember how Lasher can shapeshift? Because in episode one, he went through like showing all his different faces to Deirdre. Well, I remember this lady's face because the lady who walks up to Rowan was one of the faces he made in episode one and I went back and checked and it totally was so this is a lasher lady and I, and I caught on to it right away and I felt very proud of myself for being observant. <laughs> so yes, lasher lady is now manipulating Rowan with street drinks that she shouldn't be drinking. But regardless of that, she drinks it anyway. So now, like, I don't know, Lasher, like, ghost roofied her. So she is just on drugs now because everything goes blurry all of a sudden and because the drugs are just kicking in. And Lasher Lady, he's like, hey, let's go dance in the street. So he pulls her off into the procession. Overall, Rowan's like having a great time. She's finally just relaxing a little bit. She's dancing along. And that's when she notices this masked stranger. <laughs> so Lasher's making his move here. He's trying to seduce her into like opening herself up to him because right now she's closed off. He can't manipulate her. He can't control her. She's closed to him. So the only way you can really try to do this is through, you know, drugging her, which is a yikes for consent issues. But like, then again, you know, he's a ghost demon thing who like Bluetooth phantom banged her on a plane. So I don't really know what I was expecting here as far as consent goes. I don't know why I expected anything else. <laughs> so anyway, the only upside of this whole thing here is that they're finally letting Jack Houston like do something in this episode. He can be really quite charming and seductive when, you know, he turns it on and like this whole scene is shot really dreamily and it's kind of sexy and it's seductive. And I was like, okay, okay, Lasher, like let him do something. So far, he's just like stood in the corner and stared at stuff for like three episodes. <laughs> like it's the first time Jack Houston has done anything else. <laughs> so hopefully more of this will be coming. I don't know. So Rowan and Lasher, they just keep boogieing down the road with the funeral and Lasher, he like eventually starts leading her away from the funeral and it's toward the Mayfair house, right? So Lasher shapeshifts and he's Deirdre and he starts talking to Rowan and telling her how she, she always loved her and didn't want to give her away. And you know what? She needs to open her mind so she can be transformed and like start living in this magical land all the time. And the only way she can do that is through him. So like, is she trying to get her to join a cult or a church at this point? You know, it was like a really weird language to be using so it's also right about now that rowan starts to see through this bullshit and she's like mm, i don't think you're deirdre i think someone's lying to me here what is going on why am i seeing colors that don't exist you know she's like finally catching on she's waking up out of the magical fog 
So Rowan wakes up and it turns out, hey, guess what? She never left the filet of soul. She's literally been passed out on the sidewalk this whole time. <laughs> Again, <laughs> like the same thing happened to her on the beach. She passed out on the beach and people threw a party around her. At least this time someone comes and asks her, hey lady, are you okay? Like at least someone came to check on her. But it's like, this is becoming a recurring theme with Rowan. I'm <laughs> just passing out somewhere. But she's like, you know what? I'm gonna go head back to Cyprian's. Like, I'm done with the evening. I'm done. <laughs> like, this has been a lot. I'm going back, I'm going back to Cyprian's house. That was the most normal experience I've had so far. And since Lasher has nowhere to go now because Rowan woke herself up out of her magical dream, um, he he's he's really unhappy because he's bound to the pendant, which is now around Delphine's neck. So he takes out all of his frustration about this on Delphine by like possessing her body and making her bash her face against the wall repeatedly until it's pulp. Like, I'm not even gonna show a picture or a scene or anything because frankly, it was gross. It was it was real gooey. There's just, it was a goo face. <laughs> like, wow, Lasher, poor Delphine, you know? Like, damn, damn, Lasher. <laughs> Honestly, that's like the whole quote for this episode is, damn, like that's what I just kept saying every time someone was doing something insane in this episode. Anyway, whilst all of that was happening with Rowan, Cyprian was going to investigate the murder, right? So he goes to the hotel and he starts using his psychometry to, with the elevator. He's like, okay, I'm gonna see what happened to Deirdre. So he's touching the elevator and stuff, but he only sees like static, like someone erased the security footage somehow. <laughs> so he's like, oh, that's really weird how this someone like erased the memories of this elevator. So he's like, well, I'm not gonna get anything here. I gotta go to the morgue. So he goes to the morgue and he's gonna investigate further there. So he like touches Deirdre and he sees all this pain about Rowan being taken from her. And, you know, maybe perhaps that was like kind of the last thing she was thinking about before she was killed, because that's what's coming through the strongest. But he also happens to see a man get in the elevator with Deirdre and he sends a drawing of this man back to the Talamasca. Does the audience get to see this man? Nope. It'd be cool if we did, but we just learn that there's a picture that we don't get to see. And the whole time this is happening, the coroner is just looking at Cyprian like, why is this guy feeling up the corpse? <laughs> like, he's really confused about things. But it gets even weirder when Cyprian is leaving because the coroner, he comes up to him and he's like, he hands him this flyer. And it's like a flyer for like this incel witch hunting group. And he says, hey, you should come to a meeting. You seem like you're like-minded. And Cyprian's like, <laughs> witches, are you stupid? Like, <laughs> keeps the flyer, but he's like, um, you're kind of stupid and weird. And so like, I appreciated that not only did he decline, he also told him he was stupid and weird. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Cyprian, you're my favorite character. And the whole reason I'm really bringing up this flyer, because I think it's a hint, especially if you've seen the trailer for the season, with like the bunch of dude bros chanting, I'm assuming this is going to be a hot button issue, considering in the book as well, the Talabasca was founded in the Middle Ages for the express purpose of saving witches from persecution. So there's gonna be a whole vibe there, I'm thinking, either that or they're just gonna like throw it away. I'm not sure yet, but I'm, I'm assuming this is a plot point coming forward. Since Cyprian's done investigating, he's done as much as he can, he goes back to the apartment and he's like, there was a fire here, what is happening? And then he sees Rowan who's getting back around the same time from her adventure. And he's just like, oh my gosh, are, are you okay? Cause she looks shaken up. And frankly, like I think he is the first person like this whole season who has asked her the question, are you okay? Like, I don't think anyone else has actually asked her that. <laughs> He's the only person who said, are you okay? Do you want to come inside? So like, maybe they really are setting up uh, him up as a love interest. But frankly, I think he can do better than Rowan. I'm sorry. I really like Cyprian. I think he can do better. I said what I said. But anyways, they go back up to his apartment, they talk about their mutual nights, and how fucked up they were for various reasons. And Rowan, um, finally allows Cyprian to touch her again and use his abilities in order to see into her mind or her soul and help her understand where her powers come from and so she can probably better control them. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, Rowan is such a closed off person that this is like a huge deal that she's like letting someone in, like not just a little bit, like 
all the way into her essence of her being. Like, this is a big level of trust she's putting out. Frankly, it's more intimate than if they just banged each other. Like, this is a big deal. And then, boom, credits. So, honestly, it's, it's more of, like, an emotional hitting cut to credits than like a big action moment like the other two episodes so it's it's slightly less exciting than the other two but i get it this is character development so eh, it's fine <laughs> you know i was like i was excited about like having another like jump to credits where like something crazy happened this was more just emotional growth and that was the episode and overall i still a bit underwhelmed with things. I I hope like it's still picking up steam, maybe. I don't know. It just seems all a bit disjointed in their storytelling. On that note, let me know in the comments down below. Do you have any big predictions for the rest of this season? Um, who do you think killed Deirdre? I think that's the main mystery right now. What are your predictions? Um, how are you feeling about the series so far? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, including early access to videos, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. Links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.